Got a crocodile right up on the embankment. I got him. Proper Steve Irwin style for sure. People often ask Coyote, where does the inspiration for the work that you do come from? There are three very key people who have influenced my career. Steven Spielberg, Bear Grylls, and the one and only Steve Irwin. Tonight, I'm getting the chance to fulfill a childhood dream. We're headed out into a top secret location in Darwin with the proper permits to catch saltwater crocodiles by hand. For as far back as I can remember, watching Steve hanging off the front of a boat, leaning into the water, grabbing a salty and pulling it up on deck is something that I've always wanted to get the chance to try and do. Will I be able to pull off the ultimate Steve Irwin catch tonight? I guess we'll see. I'm dedicating this episode to you, Steve. Thank you for all the inspiration that you have provided for myself and everybody out there who loves animals. Rest in peace, my mate. And we're gonna do you proper. Let's catch some crocs. Crikey. He said nothing, you know, not a drop of rain. Well, when you're, when you're in the Northern Territory, anything goes, rain or shine. And we've been struggling with rain lately. And we're about to launch out the boat to go look for salties. Got a little bit of a storm coming in, but who cares? Let's go out there and find some crocs. We are officially out on the river. The object tonight is to catch something under two meters in length. And the challenge is to hang off the front of the boat to do this with my bare hands. Classic Steve Irwin style. At the moment, the focus is all about eye shine. Getting the crocodile's eyes to reflect in flashlight beams is gonna be our first indicator that we'll have the opportunity to make a catch. Now, if we spot a crocodile, they're super susceptible to noise and the variations in light. So Max will have to keep the light spotted right on the animal as we stay silent and slowly drift in. But with any luck, we'll find one that's the right size and get it up close for the cameras. See the crop is there? Yeah. Yeah, see it? Tiny little baby. Oh, yeah, perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, black hand size. Okay, so we've got a really small crocodile. It's right up against the embankment. We're going to try to get it. hit the roots and it went down. I could see it just going. I just nicked the edge of its tail. I actually had a lot of trouble seeing it until we got right up on it. Ah, oh, that was so close. It was a tiny one. It was about this long. Little hatchling. Got a crocodile right up on the embankment. We'll get close. I don't think we're gonna be able to catch that one, but we'll see how long it stays there. I'll jump right up on land if I have to. Got it. I got him. I can't see behind me. There's like a tunnel here. Let me see if I can just get control for a second here. Proper Steve Irwin style for sure. Woo, look at that salty. Oh, buddy. Oh, my arms are shaking. I'm so excited. And the good news is I have control in exactly the right spot, but it's just at that angle where it would be very, very difficult for me to hold on to this animal with just one hand. And is it, yeah, see? 
It's requiring a lot of strength. If he spins around the wrong way, gets my arm or my hand in his mouth and spins around, there goes my hand or my arm. But that's it right there, ladies and gentlemen. This saltwater crocodile, the absolute perfect size we could have hoped to come across and up on land. Yeah, he's a very, very, very strong animal. Oh, <laughs> my arms are shaking. This is the moment, childhood dream come true right here. The chance to interact with a saltwater crocodile. Growing up, countless times I watched Steve Irwin catch crocodiles eight times this. But for me, getting hands on with a reptile of this power and this ferocity is a life-changing experience. Now, you see those teeth up front there, perfect for catching fish, really, at this age. Although, as an opportunistic predator, if something comes close to the embankment, the speed at which these reptiles can launch up and out to grab their prey is staggering. And this reptile is absolutely gorgeous. See its eyes? Oh, and that distress call right there, even at this size, is basically saying, I'm a big boy. Do not get too close. I will give you a bite that you'll never forget. And as a matter of fact, I may take a piece of you with me. Wow, absolutely beautiful. And I'm gonna hold on tight and just kind of lift his tail up a little bit. Look at all the muscular structure. That is the propeller that powers these animals forward so fast. As I snuck up behind it, I was immediately thinking it was going to launch off and be out of range. And that moment when you're gonna jump on the back of a crocodilian, you just have to commit. And in my mind, I had zero doubt when it came to where I was gonna grab a hold of the animal. This area here is completely armor plated. You see the osteoderms up on the back of its neck. I have a firm grip, but I'm not choking the animal in any way whatsoever. That distress call just basically says, hey, something caught me, but it can tell at this point that I'm not biting it, I'm not clawing it. It's gonna be released right back into the wild. I just want you to be able to see the coloration in the body. Look at that speckled patterning. And when we're talking about the animal's camouflage, from up above, this helps it keep hidden within sunlight and shadows. But from the underside, I'm just gonna turn him like this ever so slightly for a second. There you go, buddy, I got you. See how smooth and light colored the underbelly is? That means that when it's up near the surface from underneath, nothing's able to see it through the rays of sun. Now a crocodile like this, you would say, well, it probably doesn't have any predators, right? Honestly, a bigger saltwater crocodile could easily take out a reptile of this size. But buddy, you are getting to the point where you are going to become one of the most dominant predators in this river. But I just have to take a moment to absorb getting hands on with an animal that I think infatuated and inspired so many people out there watching. Steve Irwin was the biggest influence, bar none, on anyone who loves animals. It was an absolute tragedy when he passed away. And I've always said to myself, man, if there was ever the chance to get into Australia, have the right permits and catch one of these reptiles, I would dedicate that moment to Steve. To Steve, I say thank you for inspiring all of us. We would not be where we are today if it wasn't for the work that you did and all of the drive that you put behind us who love animals. So to you, Steve Irwin, crikey, mate, we caught ourselves a saltwater crocodile. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, Salty, time for you to get back out into the waters and do a night of hunting. Okay, buddy, I'm gonna let you like this. One, two, three. <laughs> Woo, what a launch. That was strategic. I didn't want him to swing back around and give me a little love bite before he took off. Woo, crikey, Australia, we love you. You gonna go for a catch dog? I gotta catch a salty. As, as Coyote said, you know, we grew up watching Steve Irwin and it was a great influence to the career path I chose. And if I'm in Australia, I gotta, gotta catch a salty. So that salty that Coyote caught, perfect size. It was, it was gorgeous. A little beauty as Steve Irwin would say. And what do we got up ahead of us? I think we got another crack. Go for it. That's gonna collapse, be careful. Jump way up. You got him? I got him. Oh, 
Oh, you got him. He's a lot bigger than we thought. I got him. Jeez, and I fell into the mangroves. <laughs> Hold on to him. I'm stuck. I got him. Oh, watch my face. Oh, shoot. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> oh, man. I saw, I saw him underwater. Oh, jeez. He was underwater. He was coming right up. Yeah. And I was able just to sneak and grab him. That was the most chaotic crocodile catch of all time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went down. <laughs> Yeah. As well. We both we both <laughs> slipped. You went down, I went down. Well, we got another salty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was chaos. That was just chaos. <laughs> this croc was underneath the water and I was scanning and then I saw it starting to pop its head up. Right before it popped its head up and its eyes above the surface, I just reached and grab it and then I kind of fell forward myself, lost my balance. Oh man. One little beauty. All right, well let's uh, let's switch spots here and we'll take a good look. All right, second catch, bonus edition. Another salty. Uh, not as big as coyotes, but it doesn't matter. It's a salty nonetheless. And it's a, another little beauty. Very dark in coloration, look at that. Coyotes was a lot more yellow. This is a, about a three-footer, juvenile, making that distress call just like coyotes was doing. And uh, I've loved crocodilians all my life. I've worked with many species as well primarily the American crocodiles in South Florida. So getting my hands on a salty, as Kennedy mentioned, they are like the ultimate of crocodilians, the apex of crocodilians, notorious worldwide for their reputation, but also their beauty. They're one of my favorite croc species because of just their iconic look and coloration and pattern. And uh, the fact that I had the opportunity to catch one tonight as well, that means a lot to me too. So there we go. That's for you, Steve Rowan.